A way that you can think of the transverse abdominis is it's like a tensioning mechanism for the other abdominal muscles. So for, for example, if your spine is forward bent and your waist is relaxed, because the distance that, say, the rectus abdominis spans is a little bit shorter in this position, by pulling the waist in, you're actually adding length to the rectus abdominis, making it easier for that muscle to activate. And why might you want to add tension to the front of the waist if it's in a forward bend? If, if for example, you are bending forwards both at the hips and the spine, if you want to use your hip flexors to continue to actively bend your hips forward, so in a forward bend, you need a anchor point. You might want an anchor point at the upper end of those muscles so that they can activate effectively to tilt the hips forward. So in that, in that instance, you might want to activate your rectus abdominis and your external oblique sound. But because they're short, because the spine is bent forward, you could use your transverse abdominis to make it easier to activate those muscles so that then they can create an upward pull on the ASICs and the pubic bone. Then your hip flexors, the rectus femoris, tensor fascia lati, and sartorius have an active, have a stable foundation so that they can act effectively to help tilt the pelvis forwards. But even if you aren't bending your spine forward as you bend your hips forward, even with the spine straight, in that instance too, you could also activate the transverse abdominis to pull it inwards on the overlying abdominals so that they can, in that case too, also create an upward pull on the A6 and pubic bone, thus anchoring the hip flexors.